Hello everybody, Randy Rolls here. I uh, wanted to go back through another issue that took place on a check ride not long ago, and uh, it's on the check ride for the instrument rating in helicopters. And a large percentage of the check ride oral questions that uh, are unsatisfactory revolve around the primary versus IFR alternate uh, airport requirements. It's very common that somebody going into the oral exam has the rote knowledge to speak on the subject, but periodically when we take that rote knowledge and apply that rule that they know to a practical scenario, that's where the knowledge breaks down. So I wanted to give you an example of a question that would be asked uh, on an instrument rating portion of the oral exam. And this is related to 91.167 and 91.169 primary airport uh, versus alternate airport IFR requirements. So in this particular scenario, we've given a portion of a terminal aerodrome forecast, uh, forecast the TAP. So you see it's the uh, KABC airport. Uh, it was established on the 16th day at 11.53 Zulu. We have, of course, the time frame on the TAF, the winds, and then as it relates to the rule, 91.167 and 91.169, uh, we now have a visibility requirement and we have a ceiling requirement. And in this particular case, we have two statute miles of mist and a 1,100 uh, foot broken ceiling. So to apply that rule, we have to then look at the approach plate, depending upon if it's 91167 or 91169. And 91167, that's the primary airport, and we have some rules associated with that. One is that at our ETA and one hour after, we have to have at least two statute miles visibility. And on our ceilings, we have to have at least 400 feet above the lowest applicable approach or 1,000 foot ceilings over airport elevation. In this particular case, we gotta break this down to see what we have. So the question is, do we need an IFR alternate? Right? Do we have the weather to either need an alternate or not? So the first thing we have to do is look at the ceiling. So we know we have visibility, so we're good there based upon the approach plate. It requires one mile, we have two. However, we look at the ceilings and it says it has 1,100 foot broken. Okay, so we know what the airport has and we know that that's an AGL value, so it's more than 1,000 foot above airport elevation. However, the question is, do we have the 400 feet above the lowest applicable approach? So if I'm going to utilize this approach minima, which is what you see here, this would be located on the bottom of the approach plate, we're going to apply these values to that number within the TAF. Well, to do that, we have to know which one of these numbers is the appropriate value to determine that. So we have the one on the left, which is MSL, and we have on the right, we have AGL. Well, never do you want to put MSL with AGL. You should be always working AGL to AGL or MSL to MSL. So in this particular case, I can eliminate that value immediately. So we know what we're working with. Now we've got to apply the rule. So the easiest way, uh, we already know that we have greater than 1,000 feet on the ceiling. However, does the 400 foot apply? So simply stated, I would just add 400 feet to this value. It says 1269. We only have 1100, so the answer would be yes, we need an IFR alternate. So that's only half of the equation. Now that we know that we need it, we have to do the same thing related to the alternate. So in this particular case, the question we, does the weather, if we're simulating this, does this weather meet alternate requirements? Well, the, the process is the same. So the rule states that at ETA, we must have at least one mile visibility and 200 feet above the approach to be flown. Well, in this case, same thing. We have two statute miles, so we know we have a visibility. But does the math work? So we're going ahead and do the same math. We had 200 feet, that gives us 1,069. We're showing 1,100, so the answer is yes. It does work for the IFR alternate. This particular scenario represents a very, very high percentage of unsatisfactory performance during the oral exam. Make sure your students not only know the rote knowledge, they understand the rule, but how to apply it through correlative evaluation. Again, I'm Randy Rolls. Take care.